Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problem 20 of our mathematical induction proofs. In this case, we're going to be proving that n to the third minus n is divisible by three um, using mathematical induction. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you find the contents of this presentation helpful to you. All right, let's go ahead and uh, start with the proof. So what we are um, going to do in this problem is to prove that the expression n to the third minus n is divisible by three for all n greater than, all integers greater than or equal to one, okay? Now, before we start, we have to rewrite this statement as a mathematical equation so that we can be able to carry out our computations, okay? So how can we write divisibility um, as an equation? So let's rewrite, rewrite as an equation. So um, we're going to write as P1, I mean P, um, Pn. Pn is a statement, n to the third minus n is equal to 3m for um, some integer m and n greater than or equal to 1, okay? Now, this is what divisibility by 3 means. Any, any expression or term that is divisible by 3 should be able to be written as an integer multiple of 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the foundation of our proof by induction, which is known as the base case. Okay, so for the base case, our goal here is to show, show that um, P sub 1 is true. Okay, why do we start from 1? Because n is greater than or equal to 1. So the first um, uh input into our expression that's acceptable is 1. That's not always the case, so always make sure you look at the condition before you start working with your base case, okay? All right, so P1 is going to be the statement where 1 is substituted for n. So let's start with the left side. We have 1 to the third minus 1. Let's simplify that and see if we can write this as a multiple of 3. Um, let's see, so... This becomes 1 minus 1, which is 0. 0 can be written as 3 times 0 because um, 3 goes into 0, um, 0 times. So there you have it. Now what does this mean? This means that P1 is true because 1 to the third minus 1, which reduces to 0, is divisible by 3. Okay? Give it a check mark there. Now let's move on to our um, inductive hypothesis. Inductive hypothesis. Now for our inductive hypothesis, we're going to assume that this statement is true for some arbitrary k. And then in the next part, the inductive step, we'll try to see if that being true implies that the next step is also true, okay? So for inductive hypothesis, we're gonna assume that P sub k is true, okay? So let's write down um, the implication of this assumption in equation format. So let us, Assume that, assume that uh, P sub K is true for some integer, some positive integer N. Okay, remember N has to be greater than or equal to one for some positive integer K actually. Okay, so what does this mean then? We can write down the statement P sub K, uh, which is equal to K to the third minus K equals 
3m, this statement is going to be true by assumption, okay? Um, <clears throat> it's true by assumption. For some integers, a k and m. Okay, so we're just going to assume that this equation is true for some integers k and m. Now we're going to move on to the final part, the inductive step. Okay, so for the inductive step, the goal is to show that can we prove that show that the next step is true based on this assumption that we made um, in our inductive hypothesis. Okay, so for the inductive step, we have to show that to show that a piece of k is true implies that um, p the next step piece of k plus one is also true. If we can do this, then using mathematical induction, we can conclude that this statement is always true for all n greater than or equal to one. Okay. All right. So um, first thing we're going to do, let's take a look at what um, the left side of the equation of p sub k plus one looks like. Um, so p sub k plus one, we're just going to plug in k plus one for all the ends in the original statement. So it's going to be k plus one to the third minus k plus one. Can we express this as an integer multiple of three? All right, so that's that's the goal. So let's go ahead and uh, um, use our algebraic skills to manipulate this expression to see if we can um, write it as an integer multiple of three, okay? So uh, uh, something you wanna keep in mind as we work through it is that we, have, we wanna see if we can write this in such a way where we have a combination of this expression right here k to the third minus k, and another expression that is a multiple of three, so we can factor out three and conclude divisibility by three. Okay, so look for an opportunity to isolate this term, this expression, as we um, simplify this. Okay, so let's go ahead and expand that. We're going to have k plus one times k plus one times k plus one. Okay, minus, and I can distribute this minus to these two terms here, minus k minus 1. Now, if you want to expand k plus 1 to the third, you can use Pascal's triangle 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. So expanded form will be 1k to the third plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1. Okay. Now, if you don't remember um, Pascal's triangle, you can just expand it, okay? So this is the third row, row three. We're looking at row three because it's the third power. Now, if you don't wanna use Pascal's triangle, just expand it, do it two at a time, okay? So the first two, uh, you have k squared plus k plus k plus one times k plus one minus k minus one, and then combine the middle terms. So you have k squared plus two k plus one times k plus one. Okay, so we're done with that. Now we have to distribute this k across this uh, quadratic trinomial to the left. When you distribute k, you have k to the third plus two k squared plus k. All right, and then you distribute one. Uh, one times k squared is k squared. One times two k. Well, it's just the same thing, right? Just multiplicative identity like that. Bam. So that's what you get when you distribute um, the one across the entire quadratic trinomial minus k minus one. And then we combine downwards. We have k to the third plus adding coefficients three k squared plus at coefficients again, 3k plus 1 minus k minus 1. All right, so that's the long way. But if you remember Pascal's triangle, you can just fly through this, all the steps right here. But I just want to make sure everyone understands 
uh, what's going on. That's why I'm, I'm doing it in two different ways. Okay, now let's go ahead and combine like terms here, if possible. K to the third stands alone. There's no other ther term with the third power. Same applies to 3K squared. We can combine 3K and negative K. But do we want to do that? Do we want to combine these two? Remember, um, the goal was to see if we can isolate this expression k to the third minus k, okay? So we might not want to combine those two. I'm just going to leave them alone. And then look at the one plus one minus one, those ones cancel out. And then we're left with uh, 3k minus k. Now, what do you think is something, what do you think we want to do here? Well, check this out. If I group k to the third and negative k, I have k to the third minus k. And then we have plus 3k squared plus 3k. This accomplishes exactly what we want. We have k to the third minus k, which we can use our assumption to replace as 3m. And then we have a multiple, an expression that um, is a multiple of 3 because you have 3 as a coefficient for both terms. All right, so we're going to make our, our substitution now using our assumption k to the third is equal to 3m. We're going to use that, so we'll plug that in here. So we are now going to have 3m plus, and then factor out 3 from all this, these two terms here, 3 times k squared plus k, like that. And then we can... um. Factor out 3 again, so we have 3 times m plus k squared plus k. All right, now what can we conclude about this um, expression right here? Uh, m, k, m and k are integers, right? So let's do this. <laughs> Since m and k are integers, actually to be specific positive integers, then m plus k squared plus k is also an integer, okay? So let's, let, uh, let's call it uh, J. So let J be that in integer m plus k square plus k for some positive integer k. No, for some positive integer J. All right, now we can make a, our final substitution. <clears throat> so what's our substitution going to be? Um, original expression was k to the third minus k plus one. So k, k plus one to the third minus the quantity k plus one is equal to, so I'll, I'll just replace this entire expression right here with j, okay? Is equal to three j. So what does this mean? This means that this means that p sub k plus 1 is also true, is also true since, since k plus 1 to the third minus k plus 1 is what? Is divisible. by 3, because we can write it as an integer multiple of 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap things up with our conclusion. What can we conclude? Conclusion by induction, by induction, we can conclude that the original statement is always true. We can conclude Conclude that 
the original um, statement, which was um, that n to the third minus n is divisible by divisible by three for um, n greater than or equal to one is always true. Okay, so that's that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful to you, as indicated earlier, do not forget to give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very important and supportive to us. If you have any questions about this presentation, just place your questions in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on mac.serve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.